Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Let's get into it. Lance from Manila, Philippines says, Good day, Dinosaur George. I'm Lance and I watch dinosaur videos whenever I feel lonely. Well, Lance, I hope that watching those videos makes you feel better. I assume they do. Um, myself, hey, listen, I watch dinosaur videos a lot, especially when there's nothing on TV which basically is seven days a week now. But um, anyway, um, I'm glad that watching the videos makes you feel better. He says, I've noticed that there are artifacts that have been recovered that experts approve of that suggest that humans and dinosaurs coexisted. What can you say about that? And how about the biblical account that says that dinosaurs existed during the time of humans? For instance, the behemoth, winged serpents, dragons, etc." Lance, um, I personally have never seen any evidence that would suggest to me that humans and dinosaurs live together. I've looked at things all over the country and uh, really evidence from all around the world, and yet I've never seen anything, anything that even remotely suggests it. Now, that doesn't mean that that's not true. Um, I'm very respectful of everybody's point of view, and there's a lot of people that do believe that humans and dinosaurs live together. I, I, th I think that's perfectly fine to believe that. Um, one thing I, I want to make clear, though, I get a lot of questions about creationists versus evolutionists. Um, and on both sides of the fence, there are people that are very staunch supporters who believe that the other side is stupid and ignorant. That drives me nuts. It's like, because somebody has a different opinion than you, that makes them dumb or stupid. I just, it's staggering. But anyway, I talk about stupidity. That stupidity is that when you want to shut off all conversation with somebody who has a differing point of view. That, to me, is the, is the um, dis definition of stupidity. Um, there are a tremendous amount of different points of view in this. There are people that believe in evolution, but they also believe that uh, a higher being, God, uh, started the process. There are people that do not believe God exists, and I completely accept both ideas. I think they're perfectly fine. I still have my opinion, and uh, I, I like to think mine is a very open opinion, and I'm willing to embrace anybody's opinions, but I may not, well, let me go back. I'm not willing to embrace their opinions, but I'm willing to listen to their opinions. So me personally, I can only answer this based on what I've seen, and that is, no, I don't believe man and dinosaurs live together. But I, if that is not your opinion, I don't want you to feel like I'm, I'm uh, telling you you're wrong. I'm just telling you that's all I know. And as for the biblical accounts, I don't know, that's a tough one as well. Uh, oftentimes, I think we try too hard to read the Bible and make assumptions of what we see around us today. Um, uh, perhaps when, when they talked about Le Leviathan, some people believe that was a whale. Other pe people believe it might have been some kind of giant sea reptile. Again, who knows? I don't know. That's the best part of this science is that we don't have all the answers. I actually find that interesting. If we knew everything, it would be rather boring. All right, Owen from Passaic, New Jersey. Which dinosaur is the fastest, Spinosaurus or T-Rex? Wow, you know, uh, we don't really know that much about Spinosaurus. Yeah, Spinosaurus is a very popular dinosaur because of Jurassic Park, but we don't know, really don't really know its mass, how big it really is. And because we don't truly know how big it is, it's difficult to truly estimate its weight. And weight has a lot to do with your ability to run. The heavier you are, uh, the slower you generally are. And so we know a lot about Tyrannosaurus rex, or at least to, enough to kind of sort of estimate his weight. My best guess is that Tyrannosaurus probably could outrun Spinosaurus because if its estimate of size and weight of Spinosaurus are correct, it makes him much longer and heavier, and therefore, I think Tyrannosaurus could outrun him. I had a little boy ask me one time, how fast is a Tyrannosaurus Rex? I said, uh, I don't know. Some people think 15 miles an hour. Some people guess maybe as fast as 30. He said, if he was chasing you, how fast would you be? And I said, <laughs> one mile an hour faster than whatever he could run. All right, Debil from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Hi again, DG. Hope you're doing well, man. I am Debil, and I hope you're doing well as well. He said, well, this time I have a question about ceratopsians. In your opinion, is it possible that ceratopsians' frills may have changed colors depending on their circumstances? For example, most of the time the frill remains in a one particular color, but when they're going to attract a mate, the frill changes to a bright color. When they're going to intimidate or face an opponent, the frill changes to, say, an even scarier color. Uh, take care, buddy. Well, thank you, Debil. Uh, Debil, it's nice to hear from you too, buddy. Um, yeah, you know, there's been a lot of conversation about that gigantic frill on, on ceratopsians. Well, I say gigantic, it's big comparative to the body. Um, what is its functions? Well, 
we know that it was covered in uh, blood vessels. So blood was being pumped to it. Of course, that may have simply just been to continue to grow it like, like all other bone in the body. But I look at those animals and I think, you know, that is an awfully big billboard just to have to defend a neck. I agree with you that I think it would have been used in some flamboyant means. Now, whether or not it could change the color, that I don't know. Uh, color is a very important thing in the animal kingdom. We can change the color of our face by being mad. If you are light-skinned, it's very easily to see that when you're upset, your face turns red. Or, um, and we blush, as we call it blush. Um, uh, that is a way to communicate emotion. Color is very important in the animal kingdom for all animals. So either one of two things. Either it was very brightly colored on the male, sort of like the tail of a peacock that would be used to attract a mate. And perhaps the more vibrant the color, the older the animal was. And, and uh, that served to show the females he was a mature adult. And it served to show younger males that, hey, look, I'm older than you, I'm smarter than you, and I could probably uh, beat you in a fight. Either that or perhaps it's possible that they were able to flush blood into it and change colors. Unfortunately, we just don't know for certain. All right, uh, Oakley from Edmonton, Canada. Hi, DG. What dino trait do you think is better, brains or brawn? I think brains because that's what makes humans, well, human. Oakley, very interesting question, man. Um, what's better, brains or brawn? I think in the animal kingdom, it's brains. Brains is always, always more effective in the long run. Now, uh, that uh, you know, when you're fighting a grizzly bear, you don't want to sit down and challenge him to a math quiz, <laughs> you know. Brawn certainly plays its role, but I'm talking about for the total species. Um, brains are much more important because it gives you an advantage over your opponent. Yes, if they're bigger and stronger than you and you get into a fight, chances are you're going to lose. But if your brain is big enough, you can figure out ways how not to get into a fight. You can figure out things to do that would prevent you from ever coming in contact with brawn. So I agree completely with you, Oakley, that brains rules, brawn is fun, but uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's not as important as brains. All right, finally, Manuel from Witten, Germany. Hi, George. I think you have the best job on earth and you are one of the nicest persons I've ever met. Manuel, that's incredibly polite of you and thank you very much. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I agree. I do kind of consider this the best job on earth. I get to do so many things. I get to speak to tens of thousands of people every year uh, about dinosaurs. That's incredibly fun. I get to excavate things that are really cool. I get to study some remarkable things. I, I, really, uh, I really do have, I think, the... Um, Best job on earth, and thank you for, for mentioning that. He said, and now, here comes my question. No, wait a minute, let's do that more fun. He said, and now, here comes my question. That's a drum roll for all of you. In my opinion, subadult male Tyrannosaurus rexes lived in groups like male lions today. Do you think that's possible? Sincerely, Manuel. Dun, dun, dun. See, isn't that more fun than just reading the question? <laughs> All right, Manuel, I absolutely and totally agree with you. I think you're right. I think that subadult male Tyrannosaurus, first of all, I believe would have been run out of the family unit as a way to sort of prevent inbreeding. That's sort of a built-in mechanism uh, with almost all higher animals. When I say higher, I'm, I mean worms, earthworms don't do it, but most other animals do. Once a male in a family gets to reproductive age, he usually gets the boot and gets kicked out of the family so that he doesn't compete with his father. And more importantly, he doesn't begin breeding with his mom and his sisters and his aunt. So, um, uh, so I think that's very realistic. I also believe that after they were driven away from the family, I do think that subadult male Tyrannosaurus would have sort of formed a loose knit pack because hunting in a pack makes you much more effective and it's much more likely that you're going to make a kill. So yeah, I absolutely think that they would have done that. And then as each one of those reached sexual maturity, then I think they would have broken away from the group and actively gone out and hunted for females to kind of start their own party. <laughs> See how cool I am? I didn't say party, I said party. 
I saw that on The Simpsons one time. All right, everybody, that's it for now. If you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, and I'll do my best to answer my questions. For you young people out there, it's always important that you continue to be a good reader because it's going to be uh, something you'll use every single day for the rest of your life. And for everybody out there, always use those good manners. It makes the world a much better place. See ya.